Hello everyone and welcome to a tutorial on how to evenly distribute items using the conveyor system. This is version 2 of the tutorial updated for 1.31, 1.031. We will be covering in addition to how to evenly distribute items a few things about the new blocks and how they work and how the old blocks work as well. Let's start with this example. Many of you may be familiar with the following experience. You have built a set of refineries, you have connected them to the conveyor system, and added some collectors on top. Then you take your mining ship, hopefully a better looking one than this crappy abomination that I threw together for this test, and then you put a ejector on it. However, when you turn on the ejector, all of the items end up, or most of the items, end up in a single refinery. And is this not even the closest refinery? What is going on? Let's go over a few examples for how to fix this. This is an example using large ship or station blocks. We have four connectors with four collectors. The connectors are connected to a conveyor block, connected to tubes, connected to a small cargo container. The gap between the connectors and Collectors is not necessary, it is just there as a visual aid. If we turn on the connectors, you will see they start evenly distributing the ore from the chest. However, this would not work with a mining ship because the connectors have a greater flow rate. If we go over here, we have an example that will work with a mining ship. We have a set of four small connectors connected to a conveyor block, connected to some tubes, connected to a small collector. This does require power. This landing gear that you get when you build a new small ship is placed right along the line of this large collector and that allows you to place things right in the center. Above this you have a large connector. Above that some small cargo containers and our collection system to offload from our mining ship. I'm using small cargo containers here because they are significantly cheaper than conveyor blocks for large ships and stations and the connector does not care. Our mining ship has four ejectors on it and I think I called these connectors but they're now called ejectors so they're small ejectors. The same amount of ejectors down here as are on our small mining ship. That means the flow rate in and out are equal. And that is the only way that this will work without any sort of manual input. If we turn on our ejectors in our mining ship, you can see the items being evenly distributed to the various refineries. And while this does require a little bit of power, a few units of uranium will keep it running for a couple of months. And then you will not need to fool with this at all. A few things you may want you to be aware of. Large connectors output 250 liters of items 
if the item can be broken into fractional amounts, fractional kilograms, it will output exactly 250 liters. So it is outputting exactly 250 liters of stone every tick. Small ejectors and connectors output 50 liters of item every tick or one-fifth as much as those. However, there are some caveats with the small ejectors that we will get into later. If you want to have this running at steady state, that means with continual flow, you need to have the same amount of input as output. If you have less ejectors on your mining ship than you have down here, you would need to some way buffer this. You would do that by turning off this until your mining ship is completely unloaded. However, this would be when you restarted it, this would be outputting 250 liters of items, while down here you're only outputting 200 liters of items. So you would need enough store extra storage space down here to be equivalent to one quarter of your mining ship cargo capacity or one quarter of your buffer size, whichever is smaller. Now on to what was happening in the very first example where all the items were going to one refinery. Here we have nine refineries. If we turn on the connectors or the ejectors from our mining ship, the items will always go to one refinery. In that case, it is this refinery. However, if the refineries are off, they go to the closest refinery. And this is the first refinery placed. This is the closest refinery. Continuing on. Uh, one thing I forgot to mention. If you do not know which refinery or building was built first, you can merely look in this list here and they are in order that they were placed. However, there is a occasional but rare bug where the names will change and this list will become inaccurate. Here we have another example. Our mining ship is outputting into a collector connected to four small, go four small cargo containers. They were built in the following order. One, two, three, four. It is currently outputting. If we check these, first one, second one, third one is getting ore, fourth one is not. However, if we were to change this, Note that the closest one is this middle one, as there is a conveyor block there, and it is the closest cargo container that is getting the items. In the case where they're all equidistant, All of the items are going towards the first placed cargo container. There are some caveats with the small ejector that I mentioned. It has limits on what it can transport through its system. These limits are neither based on mass or volume. 
They appear to be some kind of hard-coded list. For instance, while we cannot transport that small steel tube, which is mass 4 kilograms, volume 2 liters, we can transport a construction component of mass 8 kilograms and volume 2 liters, and a motor, mass 24 kilograms, volume 8 liters. To do though, to transport those, you need to build a small connector. However, both the connector and the ejector will output the same amount of stone, 50 liters. Note, I've been saying the order in which things were placed. I do mean the order they're placed and not the order they are constructed. If we have three small cargo containers here, they're placed in the following order. One, two, three. We're going to build them in the reverse order. One, two, three, or well, three, two, one. Above them, we have three collectors, and above that, three connectors. The connectors were built in the same order. One, two, three. I mean, placed in the same order. If we turn on the output from our mining ship, you will see that the first connector placed gets all of the ore, and then the last cargo container placed, but the first cargo container built gets the ore. Somewhat differently than the small cargo containers, where the first built got the ore, or the first placed, I should say. You may be wondering, what happens if we have a collector connected directly to a ejector since they have different priorities. In that case, the first ejector placed is going to override however the collectors decide to place items. That is because the ejector can eject items or can collect items from anywhere in the system regardless of where the collector decides to place them. That is it for this tutorial. Thanks for watching. Like if you like. Subscribe if you're not. If you have any questions, leave a comment. I do read all the comments. And this world will be available for download on the Steam Workshop. There is a link in the description. I will see you next time.